Welcome back. Around 100,000 people die each year from opioid overdoses in America, according to the CDC. And healthcare companies ordered to pay up to the tune of billions of dollars for their roles in making the drugs easily available. A team of investigative journalists has been tracking the so-called blood money and has found discrepancies in how the payments are managed by local governments. The series is produced by KFF Health News and it has been recognized as a finalist in the Scripps Howard Awards for Excellence in Financial Reporting. The awards are sponsored by EW Scripps, the parent company of Scripps News. The head of the investigative team is Aniri Patani, senior correspondent at KFF Health News, and she joins us now. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on, on being a finalist for such an important story. So much of this money, I mean, billions of dollars in settlement money was supposed to go to addiction treatment and prevention, but you found a lack in the oversight. So, so where did this money go? It's a mixed bag. There certainly is some money that's going towards treatment and recovery, but we've all of local governments, counties, are using the money in ways that people find questioning and concerning. It's going to filling budget gaps, whether that's, you know, playing or uh, paying for staff insurance plans at the county level. Some places are putting it towards law enforcement, so buying squad cars for police, roadside cameras, these like lasso-like tools that can be used to apprehend people. And then some of it is going to private companies because there are a lot of businesses that see this money is out there and want their piece of it and are marketing their products. And there may not be the evidence to support those products doing what they say they do, but the money's going there nonetheless. How does that happen? So largely, there's not a lot of oversight of this money. There is no federal oversight to speak of. Um, the deals are made with state governments, and so every state is handling the money in its own way. And we know from the history of the tobacco settlement of the 90s, which a lot of people recall, um, without oversight, a lot of that money was a missed opportunity. It didn't go to uh, anti-smoking efforts. It went to filling potholes. And so that's part of the reason that my team and I decided to look into this issue is because we kind of recognized, again, no one was really tracking this money. And we wanted to focus on state and local governments and say, you know, can the press and can the public provide some accountability to see if this money actually goes towards addressing the addiction crisis? What response did you get when you reach out to a local government and ask about where the money's going? What did they say to that? So a lot of local officials I've spoken with really believe that they are using the money in the right way, in the best way. And that is because there's some guidance on how this money should be used, but it's really open to interpretation. And as I mentioned, there's not a clear oversight body. There's no one you know, dictating rules. And so it falls on members of the public, advocates, uh, reporters to really call out specific examples. And when we've done that, we have seen that sometimes counties change what they're going to do in the future. They will change their plans for future money. They will start talking to different community members who were ignored in the process before. We've seen states sometimes put out new guidance when we call out um, concerning policies they have in place. So it's definitely an evolving landscape. And this was a massive years-long investigation. You did a ton of homework and, and, and legwork on this. How did you manage to get all the data to put into this story? Yeah, this has been quite the project. We did not expect it to, to go two years. Uh, when we started it. Really what happened is in this area, because the money is controlled by thousands of state and local governments and there's no central authority, there actually isn't a lot of data to, start, to begin with. And so a large part of our project has been creating databases from scratch uh, to answer very basic questions, things like how much money is every county getting or does it have so far? And who in each state is responsible for making decisions about this money? And I think as a reporter, kind of being on that ground level for this uh, original research has been exciting. But I think the other big thing that we've seen is when we create these databases and put them out there, a lot of members of the public, a lot of policymakers, a lot of local reporters have been using it so that they can dig into the opioid settlement funds in their own community and kind of carry that reporting forward. Yeah, the accountability on this is so important. And for you, now that you've, you've dug into this, and certainly this issue isn't over, what comes next? This money is going to continue flowing through 2038. And so there are years of 
still coming, years of decisions among county officials, state officials, city officials. So I think our tracking and accountability work uh, has only just begun and hopefully will continue. We'll be gathering more data sets, providing more information to folks in the public and also local reporters who want to cover this and hold their local officials accountable. It's so important, the opioid crisis, uh, it is such a major issue that impacts so many households across this country. Aniri Patani, senior correspondent at KFF Health News, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks for having me. And a reminder.